So let me start here. So what is Golden Gate? Well, if you ask me, it's a basic, very strong, robust replication tool. There's no such tool as this. I've used other tools also. I'll explain as I go in the flow. But yes, it's one of the best tool in the market. So well, let us see some basic theory on it. Oracle Golden Gate provides real-time capture, transformation, routing, and delivery of database transaction across heterogeneous system and also homogeneous. The software facilitates high performance, low impact data movement with sub-second latency to a variety of databases and perform and lab and platform while maintaining transaction integrity. So well, let me show you how a basic architecture would look like. Like what all the components we have. So let me draw. This is my source database. This is my target. This is my source. That is my target. And let me draw the network field. Just a partition. This is my network. Now these are the transactional log that is buried or archive in case of Oracle. In case of SQL Server, it is called as T log, I believe. Then that is my extract process. So let's start from here. This is your source target, and yes, uh, every RDBMS will have some transactional logs. So let's case in terms of Oracle, it is buried or archive log. Now all the this transactional log will record everything which is happening in the database, right? So it's the best source for you to understand if what changes have occurred, right? So for example, in my extract, I have in the parameter file of extract, I gave like, you know, uh, capture the changes for 10 tables. So what my extract will do, it will scan the Burido and archives to look for any transactions or any operation done on those 10 tables. So it will read the Burido and archive and it will write to a local trail file. Trail file is just a standard file, but it is of Oracle Golden Gate proprietary. So this is local trail. Local trail, why? Because it's in the source side. Or you can call this exe trail also. So Extract is going to read the Burido and archive and capture all the committed changes and write it down in the local rail. Then I'll have my pump over here. This guy will read from the local trail and send the changes to the target read from the local trail and send them over the network to the target. So normally you would have seen diagram like pump directly writing to the RMT tree, but it's not that actually there is a background process that is server collector, but normally there is no need for you to use that because you cannot see that process in the GG prompt. But yeah, just as a knowledge, it is a server collector process which will take all the changes which the pump has sent and it will uh, accumulate them in the target trail file. So you can call them as target trail or 
are empty trail. Yeah, here you go. Then I have this guy replicate. Here I'm going to replicate. We will read the transaction from the RMT trail and write it down to the target. So here the replicate will apply whatever is there in the trail file to the target. So this is a basic flow of Oracle Golden Gate. Now well, let us go back to the slide. So here if you see this point, the software facilitates high performance and low impact data movement with sub-second latency. So what does it mean by that actually? So let's say first about the sub-second full latency. Now here I said that pump reads from the trail file and writes to the target trail or sends the data to the target, right? The thing is, for example, if the max size of this trail file is 200 MB, okay? So the pump is actually not copying the trail file, it is sending the changes. So for example, now some transaction took place and only I'll say 50 MB is filled. Okay. So thing is this pump will send this 50 MB to the target. It will not wait for the file to reach its max size as and when the local trail is updated pump will read and send it to the target so this is what we call as sub second latency all right here and high performance well uh, one of the use case like is the most common one thing is when we have the source and target we install gg separately in the source server and the target server why for example now uh, we use exa data the thing is uh, the extract at the source side can use the cpu the memory of the server itself so and so so the speed is actually high so it will have good amount of cache to use right the same way in the target but yes not always required it should be that way we can also use gg as a hub model for example well, let's say you don't have access to the target right so thing is in the source only you you can create extract and replicate here only extract and replicate and a replicate will remotely connect to the target but yeah, that's various use case we have. But since it's a very basic introduction, thing is, you we normally install GG uh, separately in the source and target servers. Okay, bring this slide show again. And yes, basically, it's a almost real time data transfer. So it's not like if you have golden gate, there should be no, I mean, no lag. Of course, there will be lag, but yes, how to solve those issues and all that we can see in this whole lecture here, like in the latest class, I have added that topic. Now, well, let me explain few topologies. So these are the standard ones, uh, like unidirectional. So thing is, you have one source and one target. So the one I showed now was that only. So thing is, uh, you have some specific data, and that is being replicated to the target. Simple. Bidirectional means both the sides are active, like both act as a source, right? So thing is, uh, like site a for example this guy will send some data to b and size site b might send some data to a this is based on your 
application full logic then we have peer to peer also so i have actually worked in a case where we have eight peer to peers so so that was a real awesome one i also upload the use case in the session soon like how to play with it how to configure broadcast is like one source and multiple targets these, these are very standard and very common ones and in browsing we can see like multiple sources and one target and cascading yes it's like you have the primary now for example your primary is not capable enough like the cpu is not that high enough but and but you cannot afford to add more load so you cannot install gg over there so what like there was a case where we had to configure the extract from a standby server so yes the thing is this is the primary uh, this is a kind of a standby and then from here we are extracting the changes and sending to the uh, various targets but yes here you will have the latency of like how much time it takes the logs to shift from the primary to the standby right so these are the basic topo logics we have now well let's see something more so this is based on my experience which i have seen uh, it's a very awesome tool to be very frank because i work with some other tools also this is one a2 dt a t t u n i t y so this is also one of the one of the good tools at level so but trust me guys uh, i try to work on it it's very good if your data lo load is low but uh, not good for high like high lo loaded application so if your application is heavily loaded i would say go with gg straight away now it is uh, acquired by click q l i k and gg allows for application among various lab, lab platforms efficiently why because you see the trail files right so irrespective if the source is oracle sql server sybase the trail file format is almost the same so that is why it can be very easily used in heterogeneous environment and almost over real time yes i have showed you this server side tool basically it's it will give you good advantage if you install dg in the source and target servers but i mean if you have the sufficient cpu ram and all and because of the pump yes it is faster also integrated also we have another uh, extract that is integrated so thing is this uses the oracle property log miner so thing is it will use an in-house tool which will do i mean a maximum work of the extract this has i mean this all these things has been told in detail as you go in this session so it's fine for now and yes you can also have dtl per application but only in case of oracle now, well, let's see some application that is high availability. Now, thing is, uh, I have seen few clients which use G GG as a DR option. Well, if you ask me, I would preferably say no. It's better to use Active Data Guard instead of GG if you just if you're just trying to look for a standby option. Migration and upgrade so yeah this is actually really hot migration as you can see uh, we are trying to move to cloud right so thing is gg provides one of the best tool to migrate and i personally did one migration from on-prem oracle to postgres in the aws ec2 so gg really helped me there and then we have local access at different site okay um 
let's take an example like uh, for example in us you have at least six time zones right so for example you need uh, for example i'm in pack and i need the data of central right the thing is in normal case i'll have to go through the db link and you know fire a query but here if with gg we can have sites uh, the data of each site in all the respective sites so for example well, let's take an example of peer to peer so for example this is central and this is pacific this is mountain the thing is uh, the data related to mountain will be sent to the other two sites same way for the pack to the other two sites so thing is i have the data available locally so it helps right i don't do i don't need to go to over the network to get my data so with gg yes the data can be provided to you locally data then we have data integrity issue well uh, please please do not expect the replication to go smooth okay like it's also a very happy thing to see when you do an info all and you see oh wow everything is up and fine right but yeah this will not be the case every time but yes gg is a very strong tool uh, it helps you to handle the data issues like the if you have different character sets if you have data missing in the target how can you easily handle it through gg and if there are any data conflicts for example you insert a row in the source but somehow the row is already there in the target so when that row goes to the target there will be a primary key constraint right so how to handle that and even when the data is missing then how can we effectively handle it so the, all those things are very uh, very easy to handle here and then comes data transformation i'll just scroll down here yeah data transformation or manipulation basically it's like calling the stored procedures uh for example there are if if you have clients uh, for example in china japan so when some data leaves the geographical uh location right so they will do some masking and all right so even those things can be done through gg over here all right so let's move forward so yes we'll just sing some basic theory now so how does it work i have oh, i mean i have already shown you guys so here here this is the source so what it does captures and transfers data in real time it is a log based hence minimal impact on the source there are no batch windows and trail file provide extra support in case of loss let me try to just change here in case of outages so all these things has been explained in the further classes how all these things can be achieved now um let, let me try to show you just a basic use case how can you perform migration upgrades and all so i'll first go through it and then i will try to explain even more oracle golden gate for oracle database El eliminate downtime for migration and application upgrade so as you can see upgrade migrate maintain or any maintenance in the database hardware os application whenever you have all such tasks you know it will minimize the risk with a fallback option improve success with phased user migration when i say phased it, it means uh, you have more control 
I'll show you how when I explain more. Whenever a database application OS or hardware must be upgraded or migrated, Oracle Golden Gate enables zero downtime up upgrades by synchronizing the new system with the existing one so that the user can do immediate switch over as soon as the data is fully in sync. It also offers a fail back option to go to the old system if needed for any reason. All right, so let me show you that in a pragmatic way. Just a second. So for example, this is my source and that's my target. Source is in Linux. We have the target in AIX and all. All right. All right. So now, how can we do the migration here? Just a second. I'll just take it a bit down. Now, for the simplicity, I will not draw whole trail files and all I'll just draw the extract pump and go replicate here extract pump go replicate that's my network This is my live system. So application is connecting over here. That's my application. Okay. So now this is my source or I can say original primary, I would say. And this is my target that is my new primary. So before Okay, so I'll just give you a short plan on how you can approach it. Now, now, now like normally when, for example, uh, we use DataGuard uh, also in case of migration, but that is only when everything related to the OS and all is same, right? But when you have like different Indian formats, right? Now in Linux and AIX, they won't be same. So here, but you cannot do data guard or something related to arm and duplicate and all. So the only way here is to do a, a logical apply. So that that can be done through GG. So here, assuming uh, we'll do the initial load with data pump that is export and import so just to give you a brief it means like till some point we are trying to sync the source and target by taking an old dump that's it okay for now in detail well it has been explained over there it's my extract that's my pump and my per applicate so normally uh, how we do is like whenever uh, for example you have a migration planned on 1st of Jan, right? So at least two, three weeks before we will start with the pre works right? So assuming that this now, when I say migration, what does that mean? That you have to move your application objects from here to that, right? So let me paint this out. For example, this is your source objects right schema objects so first thing what we do uh well let's try to make the structure in sync first right that's okay we, we made the structure in sync now this all these things we are doing two three weeks earlier and then we'll do initial load with data pump so that we can bring it sync to some point 
so for example if it took two three day, days based on the size so it will have that much lag when we start my gg process right so it is my extract pump i'm just providing the trail files for now replicate and here yeah, our replicate is trying to sync the source to the target all right now based on now in migration since it is like we uh, we know that it is a huge data load right so we take advanced two three weeks so we start all the work in much uh, advanced because we are sure that they will have a lot of lag here so just, just as a precaution so thing is extract pump and replicate will keep on thinking it and all so they, even this can take more than two three days based on the load you have over here and at one particular point the data will be in sync here so now both the primary i would say the old primary here the old primary and the new primary are in sync all right so now at the actual day right day of the migration now we will have some downtime from the application side also right so thing is uh, when the application is down we just need to ensure that there is no lag from the gg side yes if there is no lag now all the application folks need to do is stop pointing here to the old primary and come and point to the new primary where because the data has already been migrated right through gg so that is how you can do it this is only one way right now now as i told in the slide also we also have a fallback option so what we do now so let me show you that okay now here when uh, extract pump and proper applicate they are in sync right so what we'll do in the background we will make one extract here one pump here and one per applicate also here well we will not start them yet i'll explain how but don't worry i'll again go through it so that it will be clear for you all replicate over here the thing is this is all now stopped because my application is still over here this is actually stopped only we have just added and kept for nothing else all right now so let's say it's your migration day right now at this day you have to migrate your application from the old primary to the new primary so we'll have some downtime uh, for example you have half an hour downtime right so application is stopped over here and we are ensuring all the data has been sent from the source to target so me so it means that at this point both the old primary and the new primary are in sync okay so we are sure on this now we'll so application is already stopped right so we'll stop pointing application to the old primary and we'll make it point to the new primary here okay and in meanwhile we'll stop the existing extract pump and replicate over here and now when application is pointing to the new primary at this point we will start the extract with begin now it means that from this point capture everything which is happening in the new primary so i started the extract i started the pump i started my replicate 
and our replicate is applying to the old primary so here now this guy is the new primary and this is actually serving the traffic so whatever changes is happening here from the application end it is being propagated to the old primary so thing is here also at any given point of time we our aim is to keep both the sites in sync so that it becomes easy for us to migrate our application back to our old primary in case we face some issues here so that's the basic logic of migration so the same points were explained here i'll just go through it again whenever a database application os or hardware must be upgraded or migrated oracle golden gate enables zero downtime upgrade by synchronizing the new system with the existing one so that the user can do immediate see here the user can do immediate switch over as soon as the data is fully in sync and it can also offer a fail back option to go back to the old system if needed for any reason that's the basic flow actually just an overview i gave you now well, let's see here oracle golden gate for oracle database so well, let us read here for disaster recovery active data guard is a viable option for oracle database oracle golden gate supplements it with the non oracle platform now for example you had to do this migration and all in your same like linux to like the so os is same right so at that case i would straight away say you go with active data guard it will be much faster but what if this is oracle and this is sql server well then you have to follow this uh, this approach of oracle golden gate oracle golden gate keeps a standby database system in sync continuously to enable immediate switch over to the standby system when needed the secondary system is open for for read only as well as write users a post switch over data flow from the standby to the primary is also provided so what we did here like from this here from this extract from pen per applicate was a kind of we'll say from a standby to the primary the same way we can do here also and any data that is processed by the standby during the outage is moved to the primary as soon as it comes back online okay so friends any doubt please ask in the q q q and a section or you can just ask me here okay friends so now we are done with the first lecture of introduction to golden gate and uh, i'll be updating all the other lectures as and when i get time okay friends thank you very much thank you all